never given much thought to pugs until I saw some images of a rescued pug and his owner that went viral on the internet. Unable to resist the pug's big brown eyes, wrinkled forehead and various costumes, I found myself joining the legion of pug lovers worldwide. My wife and I joined a local Facebook group for pug lovers and it all spiralled from there. Before long, our house was full of pug pictures and merchandise and once I became a pug lover, I noticed that they were everywhere. In 2005, the total number of toy dogs registered with the UK Kennel Club was 25,453. This increased to 28,915 in 2014. Some toy dogs, such as the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, have seen their popularity decrease dramatically. There were 11,165 registered in 2005, dropping to 4,000 931 in 2014. The Maltese went up from 404 to 1224, but no toy dog has seen such a stratospheric explosion in popularity as the pug, with 2116 registered in 2005 to 9245 in 2014. Pugs are finding their faces on a variety of t-shirts, pyjamas, notebooks, calendars, mugs and other merchandise. They're being featured in adverts and even in major motion pictures. A pug! It's a bulldog, isn't it? So what is it exactly about this odd looking little dog that people find so endearing and why they're becoming so popular? I wanted to find out and so in this documentary we'll meet with pug fanatics around the country to find out what drives their devotion to their furry friends as well as meeting those who have dedicated their lives to saving them. My first stop took me to Bridlington where I met with Joanne and Jane who ran Facebook groups that organise meetups for local pug lovers. I'm Joanne and I run Pugs York and I have three pugs. I started Pugs York in 2012. We had a few friends that had pugs and a friend recommended that we start up a group on Facebook to try and get other pug lovers to uh, meet up. So we started with five friends and then all these years later we've ended up with over 500 friends and that's how it started. We have all sorts of activities when we meet up with the pug meets. We do Halloween meets, Valentine meets, we've done pug raffles, we've had pug agility, we've done competitions on Pugs York for Valentine's pugs and won prizes, the best dressed Christmas pug. So we try to do all sorts of activities when we have a meet up. Hi, I'm Jane and I run a group on Facebook called East Coast Pugs along with two other ladies, Penny and Dina, who also live on the East Coast. Well, East Coast Pugs are a fairly new group. We've been running since December 2014. We was all members of Pugs York and we used to go over to York on a regular basis and we saw that there was an opportunity to open a group on the East Coast with the lovely locations we have and with us living on the East Coast there was a lot of people because of the logistics that couldn't get through to York so we just like started it up and it's just gone it's just growing and growing I try to go on Pugs York Facebook at least once a day. I have so many emails, notifications, advice questions. It does take up a lot of time. I often say that you do need a full-time job to be running it. But no, I try to do it once a day, just look on in the morning and answer any questions that I've been asked throughout the night. The best thing about running Pugs York is all the pugs, all the puggy photographs, the puggy people. You get to know people, you meet new people, you meet new friends. It's just nice to see them having fun. They all like get mucked in, chase each other and they seem to know their own breed and they love to play with each other. There's no aggressive behaviour. They just want to play. It's like a little kid's party really. They're like little toddlers running round and just having fun. When we meet up, the pugs absolutely love each other. Absolutely love meeting up, making new friends, getting treats and just running riot and causing havoc. At today's meet, we're home. We're hoping for nearly the 100 mark. It has been advertised very well and it's our first joint meeting with East Coast Pugs. She's gone the wrong way. 
She's gonna run away. 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 Hi, I'm Sally. This is Amy, my daughter. We're at the pug meet. I think pug owners meet up like this because pugs are so sociable. They just all get along so well. Never a dog fight. And they just love to meet up, mix with all the other dogs. I would describe pugs in five words as lazy, fat, greedy, fun and happy. What do I love about pugs? Well, first and foremost, I think they're really comical. Every time I look at a pug, they make me smile. The mannerisms, the way they look back at you, they're like little clowns. They're loving, the perfect lap dog. They want to be with you all the time. I love the personalities, the funniness, they're so loving. I just, there's not one thing that I don't like about pugs. To be honest with you, they're a perfect pet. I got my first pug in 2009. We just went to have a look and came home with this little bundle of joy. 18 months after that, we got another one. And then two years after that, we got our third pug. I've been a pug owner for two years. I've been a Dalmatian owner for the past 25 years. And when I lost my old lady, it was the time to start thinking about a different breed. We're getting a bit older and weaker. I wanted a small dog and I was looking for something what would fill that criteria of the Dalmatian because the Dalmatian is also known as the clown, making you smile and laugh and doing silly things. And the pug fit that criteria perfectly. I think there's a big increase in pugs because they are just awesome. They are lovely little creatures, the most loving little dogs that you'll ever find. Um, and obviously they're very cute, so I think that's why people want to have one. I have noticed over the past few years that they are becoming very popular. Uh, a lot of people seem to be favouring the breed more than any other breed. And maybe it's because of the pug life. You know, everywhere you go it's pug this, pug that, pug life. I don't think pugs um, attract a certain kind of owner or person. The ones that I know are quite crazy, but we have all sorts. We have from young to old people that own pugs, and we have crazy people, we have sensible people. I just think that a pug is just one of the best breeds to have as a pet. <laughs> Do I think pugs attract a certain kind of person or owner? No, I don't, because people from the very young, from children way to the elderly, have pugs. They all have the pug for a different reason. The young children tend to have pugs because of the, the light, they can be lively and they can play with children and the elderly choose the pug because they're a lap dog, because they'll sit on the knee, they don't need loads of exercise. So no, I don't think there's a certain person. They, say, they always say like the crazy pug lady, but I don't agree with that. I think all ages are attracted to the pug and male and female. 
I think pugs have definitely influenced me as a person. They've made me far more nutty. I'm the crazy pug lady that runs up to pugs in the street, screaming with my hands up in the air. Can I take photographs? Have you heard about Pugs York and East Coast Pugs? Here's my business card. Please get in touch. Please come and join us. But yeah, I do think that they have inspired me. They are just so lovely and so crazy. They're just so playful. And I do think that it has changed me. Maybe not for the better, but it's changed me. <laughs> always have a pug in my life. After meeting with Joe and Jane, it became clear that part of the appeal of pugs was the pug lifestyle. Meeting and making friends, arranging events and gatherings and sharing stories, questions, photos and videos online. Managing these Facebook accounts took a large commitment of time from their everyday lives, but the pugs love, devotion and silliness made it all worthwhile. I'd received an email from a lady named Kat who invited me to meet her and her pug Henry. Kat's love for Henry had forced her to sacrifice a lot of her life and I wanted to find out their story. Hi, I'm Kat and I'm the owner of Henry Pug. This is Henry. He's uh, 11 years old. I've had Henry for just under 10 and a half years. Henry was one of the happiest, healthiest pugs you'll ever meet. I was very much into keeping him as fit as I could. He was always active, always running, always happy, always playing. One day, all of a sudden, he walked into the uh, living room and he couldn't balance. He became worse and we took him back to the vets and at this time he couldn't stand at all. He was uh, rushed into a veterinary hospital and uh, an MRI scan was performed. Uh, we got a phone call that night from the surgeon to say that the MRI had been done and they'd actually found that Henry hadn't got a tumour but he'd ruptured every disc in his spine. There was no guarantees if he would recover from it and because of where the disc was actually ruptured, unfortunately they couldn't perform surgery purely because if they performed the surgery there was a very good chance that he would be completely paralysed on both ends. I had him home and he was on strict cage rest for 14 weeks. We've got a gigantic cage and I actually lived in the cage with him. He couldn't eat at all, so it was all mashed up food and given him for a syringe and then emptying his bladder for him and he couldn't be left on his own so I actually gave up my job and I stayed home to try and get Henry better and walk him. I actually did therapy at home with him. I built uh, ramps where I'd held him up from his back and see if I could get him to use his weight, his back legs, to try and keep his core muscles and we made assault courses and we tried to get him walking and learning to walk again. So I spent six months purely on getting him fit, taking him swimming, hydrotherapy, taking him to acupuncture, having acupuncture. And uh, we actually got him walking again for 12 months, which was absolutely fantastic. But sadly, because of the damage, it spread. And after 12 months, he's, uh, he basically couldn't walk at all. He now can't stand or walk. Luckily, he's in no pain whatsoever no pain, he, he can't feel this. I've written a little piece that I thought I'd share with you about a day in the life of Henry. A day in Henry's world can be really hard. You try not to let it break your heart or your spirit. I know how badly Henry wants to get up and run around with the other dogs, Betty and Leo. He wants to be mobile. He wants to do all the things that little dogs want to do. I try not to think about all that because it could get so overwhelming. It seems so unfair. What did a dog ever do wrong to be made paralysed where he can't do anything for himself? And has he got a quality of life? Those are the questions I asked myself for quite a long time, but I soon got the answers from Henry that this is a life he wanted and loved. With a paralysed dog, many of your own needs get pushed aside. A paralysed dog like Henry is perched on a bed just waiting for you to come back and carry him out. Express his bladder, clean him up if he's had an accident. He needs to be moved every few hours. It's exhausting. But the knowledge that time and a lot of hard work may get this beautiful boy up and walking again makes it all worthwhile. He's already making some progress. So what if I have a lot more grey hair than I used to, more wrinkles, high cholesterol? Henry depends on me for everything and it's up to me to help him. Having said all of that, there is also a ton of joy living with Henry. He doesn't wallow in his misfortune. He's just as playful, just as joyful and just as naughty. To Henry, his life is just as worth living as anyone else's. Henry is a constant daily reminder to live each day to the fullest. Disabled dogs are an amazing lesson in how not to feel self-pity. I've chosen this life and will spend every day of it trying to give Henry the best life possible. Some dogs like Henry don't walk again but it doesn't mean they can't have an amazing life. 
and it's all about giving hope to others who might find themselves in this situation. Henry has become quite a celebrity online, which started off as a little bit of fun, but I started to host his diary of therapy, and I, I simply started by posting videos. I did a lot of uh, charity work for Women's Aid. When he was learning to walk again, he actually raised about £2,000 for them. His page rocketed and he currently has 5,000 friends, which is the limit, and he has 14,000 followers. I started getting a lot of inboxes, or should I say Henry does, uh, asking him about what had happened to him, and it's given people a lot of hope. People have got dogs themselves that have Pogs in particular that are coming down with similar issues, wanting advice, wanting to know where Henry's got certain materials from, such as the braces, wheels, but also human people who have actually had accidents, who've lost limbs or had accidents and they can no longer walk anymore, and it's given them faith to carry on and inspiration. He's had uh, a lot of gifts from people across the world, which has been very touching. He's had hydrotherapy sessions bought for him. He's had a wiggleless, a spare back brace that are extremely expensive actually sent over from the States from somebody which has been overwhelming. He's had a special disability suit made for him that is actually overall so when he drags his body it actually protects his legs and that's from a very very kind lady in the States and we're waiting for that at the moment. He's also had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of letters and cards but I think the most touching thing is the Skype messages that we have and on Christmas Day last year we actually did a Skype session for people who were on their own who hadn't got any family and Henry actually spent 10 minutes to 15 different people on Christmas Day around the world on Skype. He's got a very special friend in America, Laura, who's husband actually paid for her to come over to the UK to meet Henry. We've got another very, very special friend, uh, Stephanie in California, and we're hoping at some point she'll be over to come see Henry because she's done so much for him. Everyone says to me, is it always been pugs that you've had? Is it always pugs? Have you always loved pugs? The answer is no, if I'm honest. I went on holiday to uh, Lanzarote and I saw this strange looking little dog looking at me through a, a gate and it was a pug and it was then I became quite fascinated in them. At the time they weren't popular like they are now and you didn't see many around but it really fascinated me. So that was my first pug, Henry, after seeing the one in Lanzarote and then after one becomes two and three. When I first had Henry you didn't see many pugs. Now, don't quote me, in the Kennel Club list I think they were about number nine so it skyrocketed and you started seeing celebrities with um, Peter Andre, with um, Jodie Marsh, and then in, on TOWIE. Of course then, it takes off in the shops and everything you see is pug, pug related. You can't have too many pug things. I think pugs are very, very popular because of the way they look. You either love pugs or you hate them. And I think that because they're such a social breed and they love humans, as I've said before, they want to be around adults and children all of the time. And in particular, they like their own breed. So I think that's why clubs have become popular. People want their dogs to socialise and they love socialising. So if a lot of pugs get together, it's quite chaotic because they're all like clowns, but meeting up and having fun. And it's quite fun to be around. After leaving Cats, I was truly touched by the lengths that Cat went to to provide Henry with a comfortable life. I was also inspired by the outpouring of love and support from pug lovers worldwide and how Cat and Henry's story of love, dedication and perseverance resonated with so many people. Again, Cat touched upon the appeal of meeting with other pug lovers and watching their pets play and interact. So. I had found that pugs could inspire incredible acts of devotion and dedication in their owners and it was also great fun to see large groups of pugs playing with each other. So could I meet with someone who would combine the two? I stumbled across an Instagram account called Bubble Becker Pugs who regularly posted photos of more than 20 pugs at a time and had over 200,000 followers. I knew I had to hear her story. I'm Rebecca and I'm the person behind Bubble Becca Pugs. 
basically uh, my mum and dad bought me a pug about 10 years ago and it all went from there. I showed pugs and then I started rescuing them and now I do absolutely everything to do with pugs at all, anything and everything. <laughs> Where to start with what I love about pugs so much? I love their personality, the fact that they are everybody's friend, they love all other animals, they are 100% trustworthy, they love kids, they are full of fun, they are just clowns, they're just great. And the best thing about doing my job is that I get to spend all day, every day, with all my pugs. They always make you smile on even days when you're totally stressed out. So the best thing about it is I've just got all these pugs around me all the time. <laughs> I started with the pugs in 2006 and then showed for quite a few years. We've had a few litters and then about five years ago I started rescuing pugs and so if anyone's got a pug in need they just give me a call and I always say yes and then worry about the rest afterwards. <laughs> Do you know, I really don't know how it all happened. My friend pushed me to join Instagram. She said, oh, you should join Instagram. The pictures you post on Facebook, everybody loves. So just less than 18 months ago, I thought, okay, I'll give it a go. And it just rocketed. I put, started putting pictures on, and before I knew it, we were at like 10,000 followers. Then I came a bit addicted to it like a teenager, and I was constantly checking my Instagram, and I thought, oh no, this is getting sad, really. <laughs> but now, We've had visitors from LA last summer. They came specially to meet us with the pugs. I mean, it's amazing, you know, Gramps is loved all over the world and Thumbelina is, and it's just amazing and I love it, I love it. And it feels like one big, really happy family. Instagram, the people are all really nice. They are genuine pug lovers and they all just embrace being totally mental and daft and dressing your pug up and buying it its own car and giving it its own sun lounge or doing whatever. It's just all about loving them to death, absolutely. But now I do wake up stressed about what picture I'm going to put on Instagram to be able to top the last picture to make everyone happy because it's like, it's quite hard, the pressure. <laughs> I've got about 25 pugs at the minute. We don't want to get any more really, so now if I get any rescues, I always rehome them. Well, pretty much always, although I have just kept Ronnie, so that's not quite true. And I will just carry on as long as I possibly can with everything to do with pugs. So every day the dogs get up about half past seven they wake me up and then they all go out to play. I'm here all day, every day, so every day is pretty much the same. They have their breakfast, then they come and sleep for a few hours in the winter in front of the fire. In the summer, they just chill in the garden. And then some of them go a walk, but some of them don't like to go a walk. They just like to play in the gardens here. They stay up every night till about midnight, I would say. And we all just sit and watch telly, but no dog programs allowed because they just go mental at the telly. I occasionally get to go away for maybe one night, but really holidays are out of the question at the moment. You just can't. And plus I don't really trust anybody to do it properly, to look after them. So, but they just, it just happened. You know, I used to be someone who went on holiday all the time and did all that, but the pugs just took over and they just, they're just worth not going for. And, that's it. And I don't ever want to really go out and leave them even for a meal. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I'd rather stay at home. This is my job, my life. Yeah, not on purpose, it just happens. I don't know how it happened, but they took over. <laughs> well, Fatima was my first pug. My mum and dad bought me her as a surprise. She was the most amazing little pug. She took over straight away. She was naughty 
full of character and she's just been the greatest friend ever and she made me turn pug mad really so she had a litter of puppies and we kept three out of the four and then it went from there and my mum and dad obviously kept one and that's it we're all pug mad I would say I've rescued probably about 20 maybe a few more and a couple of pug crosses and such like and out of those I would say we've rehomed actually it's probably more like 30 because I'm thinking as I'm thinking I'm thinking of different ones yeah and I've probably kept 10 and rehomed about 20 of those rescues but you just never know when the next rescue is going to come up so it's just one of those if they do I just say yes when I either sell a puppy or rehome a rescue part of the criteria that people have to meet is that they will keep in touch with me so either via social media or phone calls or text or pop in to see us and I sort of ask for that because it's important I, like even if a pub doesn't live here anymore I still love it and want to make sure it's fine and the people are fine and that it doesn't need me to go and take it back for some reason. I've sold a, a few pugs to families with a child with autism or an adult with autism and having a pug has totally changed their lives. One girl came here who hadn't been out of the house for six years but she wanted to come here because she followed us on Instagram, she loved all the pictures and the pull of wanting to meet all the dogs made her leave the house and her mum said she couldn't believe that had happened and I've got other pugs that live with autistic children and it's made them much more chatty, much more sociable, just made them have something else to worry about apart from their own problems and it's just been a, it really really like amazing the difference they're just but i think you get that from a little pug they're just so special pugs are just so popular at the minute they're just on absolutely everything and i don't know what's caused that sensation however they are so cute that like people who don't even own a pug want to own stuff with a pug on like clothes bedding, cushions, they're just on absolutely everything and I think that it just is like a knock on effect and they are the best dog ever so. <laughs> I just think with pugs they give you so much back you know they are so loyal they're so funny they were bred to be companion dogs they weren't bred to do anything else and I think because of that they make brilliant friends and they're really just amazing little characters and I think that's just shines out of them it just really does they love being dressed up and they love just taking part in everything they're so human really they are so funny I do think pugs attract a certain kind of person initially but then I also think that pugs win over the most unlikely of people. I've not met anyone who hasn't crumbled eventually. With pugs, like, and this isn't doing any other breed down because like I said before I love all dogs but I do think they make people go slightly mad, you know, I just do. I think they bring out the eccentric side in folk and their image is so cute on everything. I mean, I, I wouldn't wear clothes with dog pictures on normally, but with pugs on, it's totally different. You know, it just is. It's like, oh, well, it's a pug, it's allowed. It's different, you know, it's a pug, so. I'm sure for my whole life I'll be a pug lover. I just wish I'd had one, like, earlier than I did. Because, not that all dogs, I love all animals, but pugs are just, there's something so amazing about them. And they're like furry people, they're just brilliant. After a day with Rebecca and her pugs, my puggy adventure had come to an end. I had set out to try and find what had made pugs become so popular and it seemed that this was down to a number of factors. Can't mention that celebrities such as Amy Childs of The Only Way is Essex and Peter Andre were well known pug owners and further research revealed a number of high profile celebrities such as Chris Pratt, Gerard Butler and Kelly Brook were pug lovers as well. This, coupled with an increase in pug merchandise available, were no doubt large factors in the pug boom. But above every other factor, it seemed to be that the pug's easygoing nature, comical mannerisms and the immense amount of love and loyalty they offered their owners were responsible for their popularity. Without these characteristics, it was doubtful that so many celebrities and dog lovers would continue to own pugs. 
I had been shown that pugs were incredibly versatile dogs that were happy both lazing around and cuddling as well as going on large walks and attending events. They weren't aggressive with each other or other breeds and could happily play in large groups giving their owners chance to make friends, socialise and live the pug life. Whilst some pug owners were self-professed crazy pug people, they were also popular with adults, children, the elderly and even those with learning disabilities. Even the harshest pug critic was often won over by their endearing appearance that was a perfect mix between cute and comical and their strong desire to love and please. But what I found most remarkable about my time with pugs and pug lovers was not the breed itself, but the people who own them. The pug lovers I met with all demonstrated an incredible amount of love and devotion to the breed. Kat and Rebecca had given up much of what can be considered a normal life for their pugs, and Joe and Jane spent a huge amount of their time every day to answer questions and arrange events for pug lovers around the world. Everyone I spoke to in this film was incredibly warm, friendly and welcoming. I was invited into people's homes and they gave up their time to help me and share the pug love. For that, I am incredibly grateful. I wasn't presented with any reason why the pug's popularity would start declining any time soon. If things carried on the way they were going, who knows, maybe my next film could be Planet Pug. She's gonna run away.